I've only purchased Sony glass simply because it has a great structure in terms of its uh, build quality as well as its ability to autofocus really well. Yeah, it, it just comes down to that. How well could it autofocus and does it make a lot of noise? I used to have a Nikon 5200, even though I had Nikkor glass with it, at the time, uh, the evolution of these rigs was not up there. I, I can't even hear the focus motors on this thing, you know? I could hear the chair squeaking more than the focus motor. I'm gonna talk about three lenses that I absolutely adore. These lenses are all that I will carry for a while until I find a substitute for that class of focal length. Now the first lens I've ever bought with a Sony glass was a 35 millimeter for an APS-C sensor at a 1.8 f-stop. It was, it was good. It was really good actually. I, I don't even want to downplay it. However, it wasn't too precise on its autofocus capabilities. So I would just set it to manual focus and just stay in that range. And I would even uh, close the aperture down to like 2.5 or something. That way I know even if, if I'm off a little bit, it won't, it won't uh, you know, make me look like an idiot. More of an idiot. And that was my main gripe with it. However, for photographs that you can control and you can autofocus on, on the fly, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. And I recently sacrificed that one for another lens. Simply because I'm sure Sony wanted to rehouse these things and sell them for a markup, but I still did. This is the first lens I'm going to talk about. It is the 55 to 210. Uh, it's not a G Master class. It, it really didn't have to be. I was simply stretching my legs when it came to photography and or cinematography, videography, whatever you want to call it some kind of a fee. And I started to see the focal lengths I really like and the focal lengths I thought were just a tad unnecessary, at least for my purposes. So this is around 90 millimeters on the full frame aspect ratio. It's, it's very far out and you can definitely, you can definitely tell the difference within the bokeh. After 90, it stops down all the way to 5.6 on its lowest. That's my main gripe with this. However, I really like the image circle, or in this case, the image square. This is it cropped out with the vignetting. I don't really mind it that much. It looks, it looks all right. It looks kind of like an older film camera if that applies here. It definitely does have older technology. However, it's completely applicable. If you ever need to punch in or anything, then this is the one to go because I, I don't have the money for a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. I don't have the money for that right now. However, with these coming lenses, you're going to be like, oh, what kind, of, what kind of things does he sell? Not those kind of things. I don't sell anything, actually. I, sell, I guess I sell my mechanical insight or something like that. I don't know. I'm sitting at the same spot. Uh, the autofocus is great. I mean, just look at this, you know, continuous. It's, uh, it's really superb for this price. I think I bought it for about $499. I don't know how much you could pick it up for. A really good bang for your buck. I mean, just look at the bokeh change. See, it's not it's not even that big of a deal that it's it's at a at a 4.6, I think, or or whatever, but still I have to illuminate this room real real bad. I mean, I turned off the light in the background because it was just illuminating too much of the background. I don't know. I don't know too much about optics technology. However, last year, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference within these different optics. So well, we're learning little by little. And this is at its full 210. So yeah, for this lens, there is a time and a place. I don't really record on this too often 
because I usually don't have the best lighting setups. I'm traveling all the time. Definitely good for wildlife. It has a really good punch in and if I could get a speed booster on this, maybe like a 1.4, a focal reducer, hopefully get some f-stops in there. But as for now, it is very niche in my setup. And the second lens that I really like is this really fast uh, 1.4 50 millimeter G, G lens. I don't know if it's a G master lens, but I, I, I can't really tell that much of a distinction. If it has good autofocus and it doesn't break the bank, I'm going to buy it. And I know it's a thousand three hundred dollars, but like I said, I did sacrifice that 35 millimeter lens in order to purchase this one. I mean, I only got so much off, but still it, it was something. And I really do like the picture quality. Look at this close up. Look at the bokeh back there. That is phenomenal. And I bought a, a faster lens simply because I like to isolate the background. And this background over here, it's not even like four feet away. Let's see the f-stop. Yeah, I have this thing wide open. Um, I want to shoot wide open for more of these classes of videos. And it's just because it's essentially like a mini podcast. I'm just giving my opinion on what I have right now. I know I seem like a bit of a low energy fella, but I'm taking some pain pills for these things. The reason I went with the 50 mil was because the 35 mil at an APS-C crop gave me the punch in that was equivalent to what, 52.5 or something around there, or 52 flat. But I saw that 50 was a really good punch in. I liked the 50 millimeter aspect. And if I punch in on this one, then I'll just get a 75 millimeter uh, equivalent. Nonetheless, this is one of the better prime uh, lenses I've ever purchased. I was not going to go with the 1.2 f-stop. I don't own so many shares in Amazon to just sell a few and just buy a few more lenses. I wanted something that I knew I was going to I was going to use, but not need even in the coming future. This is more than enough. If anything, I'm probably going to stop down to like two to record something worthwhile. And this is my 20 millimeter 1.8 f-stop lens at a full frame. And I know I could just punch in and I could be a lot closer. I wouldn't lose that much fidelity because this is 7K oversampled uh, down to 4K and it'll be just fine. However, I do like, I do like this for different purposes. I could use this in like a tour. I could be really close without y'all forgetting the context of where I'm at. And that's a, that's not a casting couch. I'm in a studio and I, well, like a studio apartment and I'm gonna move in a little bit. I was only here to see this thing and heal her up. And here she be. This is the last lens I'm going to showcase. This was the primary reason I had those uh, lights up there. Simply after the de-squeeze so you guys could see some of the different uh, oval bokeh. But I really like this lens. This is my 35 millimeter anamorphic lens at a 1.6 times squeeze. It is really, really good for getting a wide field of view. I cannot shoot open gate. I wish I could. I would probably have a lot more to show for it, but this is the best I'm gonna get and I, I enjoy it. This is probably why I didn't flinch that much when I sold my 35 millimeter lens. This is extremely good for panoramics, especially outside. And of course, if you're going to shoot a, an indie feature that maybe I'll shoot in the future, it's going to be with this lens. This lens is phenomenal. It's going to be sitting in the background for a little bit. However, I have yet to have most of the actors uh, right and ready to go, set and ready to go. Now, without fumbling my speech for too long, I want to give you guys a, uh, a huge thank you for 
watching the video. And if you guys enjoy this class of content, uh, please feel free to subscribe. I do want to upload on another channel, uh, somewhat of a vlogging channel, uh, or to that degree, but I'm not exactly going to be vlogging. I think that's a little bit atrocious being out in public and with a big ass camera. I might be able to do it on my iPhone 15, but it's it's still a little whack. I might do it in a way where it looks like I'm on a phone call or something. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it'll pan out. This channel is probably going to be more introspective and uh, really dealing with with philosophy and or the current state of events. Yes, I'm going to have an opinion and anybody who ever has had an opinion will have a bias. Um, I'm not going to classify it as news. It's cl clearly just commentary, biased commentary. It is what it is. Even the lens that you're seeing this from, there is a purpose. Things are chosen to be in the background. Things are chosen to be in the foreground. Everything has an intent, and that also applies with commentary.